Hi guys, this is Lulu from Honey Art Cafe and today we are going to be painting a Totoro on a wood coaster. So what should have come in your supply packet is a container of clear gesso. We have a container of some paint colors. We have a pencil, a Sharpie fine liner, and a paintbrush. In addition to that, you'll want to get a bowl of water for you to paint with. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil and in the center of my wood, I want to draw an egg shape, which is basically an oval that's a little bit wider on the bottom. So you do want to leave about a half inch, somewhere between a half inch and an inch away from the edge, okay? Whenever you're um, drawing in your egg shape. Okay, so I've drawn in my egg shape. In case this is hard to see, I'm just gonna go ahead and outline this with a marker. You guys should not be doing this. I'm just doing this so that it's a little bit clearer for you to see. Okay, so this is my egg shape. And then we're gonna be drawing two leaf shapes two leaf shapes at the very top of my egg. Okay, so two leaf shapes up at the very top of the egg. And these are gonna be the ears. Next, I'm gonna be drawing two big circles up at the top. You want them to be the same size. And then um, in the upper middle part between the eyes, we're gonna have this triangular nose. Now, if it's looking a little bit um, cramped in here, you may wanna scoot one eye over a little bit. So you do wanna make sure you have enough space for your nose as well as your eyes. So it may take a little bit of adjustment. Okay, and I'm gonna have him looking upwards and kind of cross-eyed. And that's because I wanna put a leaf on his head. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a leaf shape and this leaf shape is gonna be half inside of his head and half outside of his head. And we'll do a little um, leaf stem going into the middle of the ear. Next, I'm gonna be drawing in his belly. So I'm gonna start off just slightly below the eyes with a upside down curve, okay, upside down U shape. And then this is gonna go ahead and curve downwards and this is basically another oval I'm going to draw a little bump out for his arms and then um, for the grass I just want the grass to be this kind of um, curve along with the body okay so the the bottom is going to curve along the bottom just like the body does okay so it's going to look kind of like the world is curving around him so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my paintbrush and i don't want to get it wet i just want to apply the paint directly onto here Okay, so I'm gonna apply my lightest color first, which is gonna be this cream color. So I'm dabbing it into the cream color and I'm gonna be painting that inside the body.
If you have like a dark knot in your wood and you want to cover it up, you may need to do more than one layer. Um, but generally speaking, I really like it when I can see a little bit of the wood pattern. I don't have any dark spots on my wood. So I'm just going to do one layer of paint. And just keep in mind that your paint does not have to be super perfect because we are going to be inking this so the outline does not need to be perfect by any means. Okay, and then I'm gonna be applying this white paint to the eyes as well. And don't worry if you um, paint outside of your lines. You can always fix this because this is acrylic paint. You can always paint over it and adjust it later. So now I've painted all of the white areas and I'm gonna rinse off my brush and my water. And then you just wanna go ahead and dry your brush on a napkin. Okay, next I'm gonna be grabbing my gray paint. Okay, so when you're painting against an edge, you always want the tip of your brush to be pointed towards that edge. So what I mean by that is while I'm painting against this edge right here, I do have my tip of my brush pointed towards it, but then when I paint this edge of the circle, I'm gonna rotate my coaster so that the tip of my brush is once again pointed towards that edge. So as I paint around the circle of the eye, I am going to be rotating my coaster. Another good tip is that you generally speaking don't want to load more than half of your paintbrush with paint. It's just a much cleaner way of painting. No big deal if you do load it with more paint than that, but that is generally a good rule of thumb to keep your uh, painting process clean.
Okay, so now that I've painted my Totoro, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my brush, dry it on my napkin, and I'm gonna grab the green paint. Okay, and you can either leave the bottom of it choppy or you can just go ahead and follow the edge right here. Depending on if you want like a more painterly look or if you want it to be a nice clean edge. Okay, and then take a good look at your painting right now. We're very close to finishing the painting portion. You wanna see, does your Totoro look pretty symmetrical? I noticed for mine that I'd like to have a little bit more gray down at the bottom here. So I rinsed off my brush, dried it on my napkin, and then I'm just going in with a little bit more of the gray paint. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and let the um, grass dry right now, and you don't wanna touch it while it's drying. So what I'm gonna do while I wait for it to dry is I'm gonna go ahead and start inking the rest of the Totoro. So for this part, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. Once you get to the body area, you can go ahead and do some little tufts of fur by just doing like a little short diagonal line that angles out side of the body.
And you wanna just make sure that anything that you're inking over right now is gonna be completely dry. So do definitely check for that. Okay, and then sometimes the ink is kind of difficult to work with. These are new Sharpies. However, um, again, sometimes it is kind of difficult to get the ink out. So just keep that in mind. Um, if any of the lines get messed up, you can always basically start over um, by applying a little bit of your paint. So for example, if you think like this line looks a little bit bulky, I could always go in, um, let that Sharpie dry, and then I could always go in and touch it up a little bit with my acrylic paint, and then that'll just go ahead and thin out the line. Now, obviously you can't do this indefinitely because you'll run out of wood coaster space, but you can, you know, fudge the lines a little bit here and there without any problems. Okay, next I'm gonna be outlining the leaf up here. Okay, and then I'm not going to outline the whole belly to do a couple of little tufts here and there of fur. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do three little triangles. So this is kind of simplified from the normal Totoro that has a lot of different V shapes. If you wanna ink more V shapes, that's totally fine. You can kind of pull up a design from the internet and add more, but I'm gonna leave mine simplified like this.
and then the nose remember the nose is going to be up at the top 